Now let me shift from the, uh, the health sector and take you to parliament because parliament has beat a U-turn. After intense public backlash over decision to hold a post-budget workshop at the Rock City Hotel in Kou in the Eastern Regions. MP were set to travel and stay at Rock City for three days for the workshop, but the NDC member of parliament for Bwim raised the issue on the floor, fighting the decision because of the cost implications. But today, Speaker of Parliament Arban Babin explained that the cost to Parliament to host the event at the Rock City Hotel was so high compared to other similar facilities in the country. Any objective person and any patriot looking at the report as a guide will not say the post budget workshop be held at Rock City. The copy is there for everybody to come and look and read. The details are here. And as a speaker, I will not shortchange the interests of the country. Just because Honorable Brian Achampoin is my friend. I won't do that. Please, I'm not talking about people attending or not attending. I'm talking about the right decision. And so, Honorable Member, I can identify you. Please. You don't interrupt the speaker when he's speaking. The report is here. I am tempted to go by the proposals that were made on the floor. These discussions on the floor that day ignited a public debate of the matter. And in the social media, internationally, parliament was taken to the cleaners. And members were considered as being insensitive and greedy and that our parliament was not responsive to the interests of Ghanaians. But there was no such decision. The thing was still under discussion. So last week, as you heard it and watched it on Joy News, the business statement for this week was adopted, and that gave the indication that parliament was going to hold the post-budget workshops at the Rock City at Kwao in the Eastern Region. But today, both the minority and the majority leaders have now agreed that a workshop be held in Parliament. In view of the fact that, Mr. Speaker, you are saying that uh, it generated a lot of heat, my advice, and I guess I will have the buy-in of the minority leader, is to entreat members that we hold the, the post-budget workshop here. If it's, a, if it's about cost, we plead with members to avail themselves. So we hold it here and not go anywhere, and not travel anywhere again. I will entreat my colleague to join ranks with me, and we move on. The Honorable MP for Buem, the Honorable Kofi Adams, has indicated publicly that there is the need for Ghana's parliament to consider holding the post-budget workshop here. Mr. Speaker, he said this in good faith. Considering the mood of the country, considering the state of our economy, Mr. Speaker, it's only right, it's only right that as members of parliament, we attempt to save the public's purse. Mr. Speaker, I support the call from the Honorable Member from, for, from BUEP, the Honorable Kofi Adams, that the post-budget workshop should be held here. Mr. Speaker, this is particularly important. Mr. Speaker, this is particularly important because, Mr. Speaker, clearly, clearly, we have to save the country from further expenditures. Mr. Speaker, I'm urging colleagues that in as much as we are holding the post-budget workshops here, Members must also ensure that they attend. They must attend, and we should all participate fully. Mr. Speaker, oftentimes when you hold workshops here, 
members do not participate properly. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleading with colleagues. I'm pleading with colleagues that we should all endeavor to participate and concentrate throughout the post-budget workshop while we hold it here. What is the ruling of the Speaker? We can now listen to Alban Babin, the Speaker of Parliament. I believe that democracy has finally decided and the people have prevailed on their representatives to decide that this year's post-budget workshop be held here in Parliament. Yeah. Honourable Members, it is so decided. But reporting will definitely be Saturday early in the morning. And we'll use the um, floor of the house as the main conference room. But the other conference rooms will serve for side workshops and the model has changed. We are now not going to listen to lectures from experts. It will not be lectures. It will be Training of trainers. So clearly, Parliament, you know, summer sorting two times before landing. That is the situation as you have it on your screens. But I mean, to put it in proper context, usually after the presentation of the budget, there is the, the, the post-budget workshop. Three days uh, that members of Parliament usually converge at a particular place. They are taken through the dictates of the budget. And then when they come back to the House, they now go through the debate of the budget and then part resolution on it, whether to accept it or reject it, and then go into the consideration of the estimate, and then finally they will pass the appropriation bill so that government can spend the ensuing year. So this time, it will not be held in the hotel, but in the Chamber of Parliament, and of course, also in the offices that Parliament uh, has. Kofi J is from our data. Uh, we are looking forward to Wednesday. Yeah. What should we look forward to? Well, Wednesday is going to be the 2024 budget statement that will be read in Parliament. And you're asking me what we should look forward to. I think that this time around, we are going to see more of the IMF elements, you know, in the 2024 budget because we have the first tranche and we are actually expecting the second tranche to hit our account very soon after completing, uh, you know, the first review and then also meeting all the requirements. But if you look at the 2024 budgets, there are certain things that Ghana we have to meet because I am looking at our tax to GDP ratio as indicated in the IMF program. And we have a big tax to actually complete, move our tax to GDP ratio from that around 13% to somewhere around 16% by the end of the you know, IMF program. And this should quickly tell you that it will be difficult for the government to do away with any form of tax that has been already implemented. Probably they'll be doing some tweaking so that some of the taxes can bring in more revenue. Already, if you look at the e-levy, first it was projected to bring in about 7 billion Ghana cities. It did not bring that money. And I'm looking at the provisional data from the finance ministry. And if you look at it, it's clear that the e-levy could miss its target again for the second year after its inception. We are looking for, I think, close to uh, more than 800 million Ghana cities. Million Ghana cities. This but, 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 I mean, th th this is where mm -hmm. it gets interesting. Yeah. I mean, when you look at data from the Bank of Ghana, even data from MTN itself, mm -hmm. and you look at the, tra the, the volume of transactions Transaction. the, using Momo, mm -hmm. Versus over a much? trillion Ghana yes. cities. Yes. And yet... Government revenue is just small. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, just like you said. If you look at it over the period, the cumulative data in terms of both transaction, um, you know, and value of transaction, volume of transaction, and value of transaction, they've all gone up by a significant magnitude. 
but we are not really getting the target that we set for ourselves to get from the e-levy. Possibly because, you know, people are now finding ways and means to go around the system. People are doing more transactions, but they are finding ways and means to do away with the tax. And so probably government would have to, as part of the revenue measures that is supposed to go under review um, in the IMF program, and then the government has said that there's going to be some review. The review is supposed to help them optimize the, you know, bringing in more revenue and raking in so much mm. from what we are already experiencing. And so just like you said, transaction, volume of transactions, transa they've all gone up, but it is not reflecting in terms of the amount that government is raking in from the e levy so it's interesting it is unclear how much government is seeking to appropriate mm -hmm. in 2024 but clearly yeah what we cannot dismiss is the fact that uh, revenue generation is going to be very high yeah. on the agenda yeah yeah it means widening the tax net and bringing in more money yeah so so another angle probably is cutting cutting off you know expenditure the government has already done that in the IMF program document, if you look at the number of tax reviews that we have to do, the IMF estimates that if we are able to do all of this, I think there are about four elements. If you're able to do all of this, it's supposed to add about 1% to GDP. It includes the, the VAT and I think other forms of taxes. If you're able to do all of these things properly, we are supposed to add 1% to our GDP by the end of probably this year or next year. And that's a huge target for government to, to look at it. If you look at this year, for instance, that's the first time that our expenditure crossed more than 200 billion Ghana cities. We do not know the projected expenditure for 2024, but what we know is that government will be working hard to close that budget deficit we've been experiencing. But that also means that less spending. Less spending. It could be less spending coming together with more revenue. So it depends on how you look at it. Are we going to do more of revenue and still maintain the expenditure because you've been asked to, to increase your budget allocation to leap program, education, look at health and all of those things? How is it going to affect those areas? But if you still want to maintain your expenditure, then you have to go ahead to increase revenue. Thankfully, thankfully, Elton, we've been able to get that $104 million from, from the African the, Development Africa, Bank. Exactly. And that's good news for us going into 2024. We are expecting that the IMF will give us the additional $600 million 2024. And then also, the kind of restructuring we are seeking from, from uh, external creditors will give us the fiscal space, which is estimated around $3.5 billion every year. So if you are able to do all of these things, there's a huge fiscal space for us to go into 2024, but that's an election year. And when you create that big fiscal space, people are scared how government will utilize it. But the space. thing the, around the same issue is also the fact that we have so many uncompleted projects mm -hmm. that have been suspended because mm -hmm. of lack of funding, because yeah. the sponsors have simply uh, withdrawn their, yeah. the, the, their funding for these projects. And these projects are begging for financial support yeah. to see completion. Government will be desirous to mm -hmm. see the completion of some of these projects. We can talk about so many exactly. uh, road projects scattered across the country exactly. that requires financial support to see them through. Agenda 111, mm -hmm. uh, capital intensive project. I mean, you, you cannot present a, a budget without the telling... The Teshin Nungwa yes, Beach you, Road. You yeah. obviously cannot present a budget without telling the public yeah. that this is what I'll, I'll be doing for you. Every community will be expecting some level Something. of development in their community. And those developments will not come cheap. Will not come it has to be funded, will not come and cheap. that is the issue. And here is the case that you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not attractive enough for anybody to lend you yeah. money because your ability to pay is being questioned here. It's, it's doing so yeah. it is some kind of a hole that government finds itself in. Well, and well, how the how government <laughs> gets out is is, 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 is is actually the issue. Exactly. But if you look at the AFDB money, for instance, it comes in the form of grants. So it means it's not like your usual 750 million loan that we got from the market when we were kicked out of the euro bond market and also could not get access anywhere. And so if you look at all of this, in Elton, just like you said, capital intensive projects mm. that will cost the state millions of Ghana CDs. You mentioned, um, you know, uh, some, I mentioned some of some projects like the Teshinunga. I mean, for example, the, the La General uh, Hospital, the exactly. reason why 
work has yet to start Money. is because the sponsor withdrew the funding. Mm -hmm. Now we are told that the finance minister will tell parliament on Wednesday that government has this amount of money to do it. That will come from revenue generated internally. Exactly. Okay. But, but how about cathedral? Well, as for that one, we'll see how it is going to be. But Kofi, I want to, I want to thank you so you're much welcome, for welcome. coming through to give us the latest figures on the 2024 budget. But let's stay a little longer on the budget because in 48 hours, the finance minister will be before parliament to present the 2024 budget. Already, Ghanaians are tabling their expectations. Key among them is a reduction of taxes to ease the financial burden on the working class. There's also a push for the president to share in the citizens' burden by beginning to pay taxes. Please give me a list on what and what we are going to tax him for. The young man who came and just spoke to you pays tax through his momo, through the water he drinks, COVID levy, amongst many others. What are we going to tax the president on? I am here with the Fix the, Con uh, Fix the Country group because they are all my sons and daughters. They are unemployed and they are paying taxes. I am unemployed and I am paying taxes. I alone, I will not pay tax. If he cannot pay tax, I should pay tax. I think uh, it is a very legitimate concern that has been raised by, you know, this um, stakeholders or um, individuals in the country that the president equally needs to pay taxes. I think it's, it's a legitimate concern. And if you look behind me, you can see the Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who once also became a president of this republic. And I don't think Kwame Nkrumah was paying taxes. But Kwame Nkrumah believed his responsibility as a president. His role as a president in the lives of the ordinary people on the street, in the, in the deplorable villages, which we call. So my problem is not about the president paying taxes. My problem is, is the president actually upholding to the responsibility as a president in this country? All the benefits we've been giving to them, even if they are upholding to the responsibilities they are supposed to uphold, I don't think taxation and whatever will be our problem. Well, I believe that um, the president, looking at the extent of his work um, and then what he does, should not pay tax. Yes, because um, his, his, his system of work, what he does, thinking of the whole nation and all that, I don't believe he should pay tax. But then, um, that is why we picked him as a leader. Looking at um, the platonic suggestion of leadership, a leader should should be somebody who should be protected, and then should should be kept, and then go through thorough teaching, so that he all he does is that he should put things together and put this right. And so basically, I think that if you're a good citizen, you should set an example for the nation or your citizenry to follow. All right. So being a president, I think you should be the one to set example for us to, I mean, to follow. So the president should pay tax. Well, I never knew that the president doesn't pay tax. So for if you said it right now, I think the president should pay tax. Seriously, because they get everything for free. And, and, and it's, for me, it's wrong. Since they are being paid, they don't need to get things for free. They have to pay everything. Because as a normal Ghanaian, we are being paid, we are paying our tax, look at the shops and everything. So the president is not far from the citizens, so he needs to pay tax. Okay, Mutin, because he's the president, he has been doing a lot for the country. So me, to me, I think she, he has to be exempted from paying the tax. Because he has been going through a lot. And in case the country needs any help, he's the one who leads us to get the help. So for me, he has to be exempted. Because he who the Ghana money, all the Ghana money, so he has to pay tax. I think the president should pay tax because he's the leader of the country. Uh, normal citizens are going up and down, paying taxes. Even with our, the little we have, we still pay taxes. So since the president is the leader of the country, he should lead by example by also paying tax. He should pay tax. The reason for him to pay tax is that it's also going to help the government because the government needs a lot of things and not all the citizens are to partake in it. The government must also 
join in it. And so my mum kwa the president kwa the social tax. And tax the social tax. Say you need tax nibi. And so what my mum president in there? What did pay? And what did pay there? So you try to contest on social tax. No one's really born my own. You're watching the polls here on Joy News. We're taking a short break. When we return, we'll look at the tech market and artificial intelligence. You stay right there. We'll be back.